welcome back to ignition insights uh, last couple of weeks we've been reviewing some JDM cars uh, I thought you know what we're in America let's review an American muscle car today so what we're looking at today is that beautiful car over there that is the 2020 Ford Mustang bullet So the name Bullet comes from the 1968 film um, starring Steve McQueen named Bullet. And as we all know, the, uh, the Mustang was born in 1964 and in the late 60s you had the likes of Lee LaCocca and Carroll Shelby who were putting together these performance oriented Mustangs such as the, the GT350, 350R and of course the GT500. And then you have the bullet, which was un which had such a unique design. It was made for the film, and uh, and and especially in that clean, dark Highland green color. And if you watch the movie, it's a little bit dated for today's time. However, the car chase scene itself is just such an iconic scene uh, that you can still watch today. And you'll notice that it really sets a benchmark for these kind of stunt driving scenes. And uh, even I'm pretty sure today it's it's kind of like the precedence that you would follow. This is the level that you want to achieve um, when you do fast-paced stunt driving. So I have two words for this car: Hollywood nostalgia. And uh, of course, because uh, the bullet was uh, was uh, given its birth at the time of that film, and it was for the film. Um, it has kind of a Hollywood trademark to it. So this is kind of a special car here. The, the bullet itself came back in 2001. Limited production, of course, for that single year. I think it was limited to roughly 5,000 units. That was also a great Mustang. Um, and then it also came back in 2008 for with the, uh, the S197 chassis. And that chassis was kind of the the generation where the Mustang went to the gym it just looked very muscular it looked like a true American muscle car and it kind of it resembled the uh, the original Mustang just a little bit more um, and again that one was um, very popular it carried the, the Highland Green forward um, and again limited to 2008 2009 in production roughly five to six thousand units um, and then you have this S550 Mustang uh, for, for a bullet and this bullet is absolutely incredible I've been driving it for a week and uh, frankly it's just it's just absolutely incredible the subtle design cues the uniqueness of this car really makes the Mustang name pop frankly if I was in the market for a Mustang <laughs> this is the one I would buy but let's get into that a little bit later on um, but let's do the walk around of course as usual uh, this again you have that beautiful green color it's it's not so bright uh, right now so you can't tell how special this and how unique this uh, green color is but when the sun shines on it from different angles it kind of gives a sparkly glittery effect um, and it's just it's just it looks beautiful so you have of course this s550 chassis this is the uh, traditional chassis that everyone loves it's been around for a while uh, and it just it just fits so nicely with this and of course when you throw the name bullet on you're not only getting that color you're getting the subtle design on the car so as you can see there's no badge anywhere there's no pony badge there's no Ford badge no Mustang badge or anything like that it's just a clean nice look uh, it stands nicely you can see you have the front splitter there's a lot of um, things carried over from the Mustang GT the GT premium uh, with the performance pack of course so this car when you buy it you automatically get that performance pack uh, you really only have a few options when you buy this car for example the, the magnetic uh, suspension and then the Recaro seat so this test this one right here does have the magnetic suspension but it doesn't have the Recaro seats but we'll look into that when we get inside the car you can see we have these traditional wheels here five spoke classic look uh, it just it looks really nice it really makes the car stand out um, and then you have these upgraded Brembo brakes um, six piston the tires themselves they're Michelin uh, pilot sport series uh, summer tires the are uh, they are 255 in the front 275 on the rears of course uh, Mustangs are rear-wheel drive cars and um, 
and the, the tires are very nice they handle quite well uh, when we'll take it for a test drive we'll see how they how they grip uh, but overall Mustangs they're known to have their give and take when it comes to the handling when it comes to uh, you know cornering and things like that however this car I've been driving for a week and it, it, it feels really nice to drive um, and again we'll show you that in a minute so again you have this nice clean look the green and of course on the back you just have this huge bullet badge and it just looks it looks amazing especially if someone was behind you they're looking at the car you see that bullet badge really pop and uh, and I really like that about this car overall I mean you're, you're seeing a lot of the Mustang GT premium uh, there's not that much that I can t t talk to you guys about except for those unique design cues let's go inside the car and let's take a look at what's uh, what's different here So here's the traditional seats that I was talking about that come with the car. I would kind of recommend these seats just because you get the cool and heated function. But of course you can opt in for the Recaro seats. Uh, it's about $2,000 extra and they'll, they'll really keep you in place, really keep you bolstered in. Um, but if you live in a hot state or a hot country, I would recommend just sticking with these ones because that cool function is nice. Uh, yeah, so we're inside the bullet cabin. Of course, this is very familiar if you ever sat in a traditional Mustang f with this uh, generation. Uh, besides of a few design elements that have changed, for example, of course, the one that's standing out right in front of us is that bullet badge on the steering wheel. I absolutely love the way it looks, the way it stands out. Uh, again, you have this white shifter, this cue ball shifter. It looks great. It's, it's a very unique touch and it kind of, it's a, it pays homage to that original Mustang uh, in the film that also has this shifter. You have that bullet, uh, bullet label over here with the chassis number. But besides that, it's kind of uh, familiar territory. If you sat in a Mustang in this generation, uh, not much else has changed. Um, you still get this manual uh, parking brake. It's, it's too bad that you know most cars don't uh, make it like this anymore. Um, and then you're still getting that SYNC 3 system in here. The toggle switch is on the bottom here. Uh, let's start up the car and let's see how it sounds. You can see it had a little animation showing a, a green uh, bullet. <laughs> That's a nice touch. Now, talking about that engine, let's actually open up the hood and let's see how it looks. Okay, so, of course we're looking at that traditional uh, pony uh, engine here you have a 5.0 liter v8 dual overhead cam 32 valves uh, it spits out 480 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque you achieve the horsepower at roughly 7,000 rpm and you're getting the peak torque at around 4,600 rpm so uh, it's great it pulls very nicely um, of course you have some uh, few uh, things that you carried over from the gt350 the intake manifold the cold air intake um, and paired with that active exhaust system that we just heard when you start, started up the car it's just a gr overall it's a great experience you have to get I mean this car comes with the active exhaust so it sounds absolutely amazing um, and again this is the traditional engine that's been carried over it's just been tuned a little bit um, you know a little bit 20 more horsepower more than the GT so you get a little bit more punch from this car uh, and I like that it has it sits on its own level it's just not exact copy paste from the GT aside from the aesthetics you're also getting some engineering upgrades here the overall body itself you have uh, 54 inches in height you have 188 inches in the length and then you have uh, I believe 77 inches on the width so this is a traditional Mustang fastback uh, body style and uh, let me try to see if I can come a little close to that exhaust to give you a feel of what it sounds like
even while idling you can tell it has that rumble it has that <laughs> it's just ready to be unleashed um, even when you're sitting in the car actually and while the car is idling if you just keep your hand on the shifter it shakes just a little bit so that's when you know you have a car that's ready to be unleashed the best part of the interior is of course that gauge cluster it's just a nice uh, it's a very nice gauge cluster it adjusts based on the drive mode that you're in so it starts up in normal mode I kind of wish that it starts up in or at least give you the option to start up in my mode so that you know you can kind of I think most people just uh, configure the, the settings uh, to their own likings and you can do that in this car you can throw on um, you know heavy steering with the track exhaust with the uh, with the um, with a sport uh, suspension as well so it's just uh, you can configure the drive modes to your liking and then you can save it and then you can kind of flip to it as you as you please and you can configure the drive mode here with this toggle uh, so if I hit it up you can see it's a normal mode I can switch it to sport plus the gauges will change this is probably the most popular gauge um, everyone who drives this car just keeps it on sport plus or when they configure my mode you can keep it so that it always comes to this gauge cluster and um, this is a nice design it wraps around the gear shifter and it's funny because you have such a long stretch again you have 74 rpm 7400 rpm and uh, if you're shifting around four even 4.5 like you're barely making it past that gear um indicator so it's just um it's funny how that looks but it's just uh it's just a nice look the way it just wraps around overall and then you can flip the track and you'll just get that long stretch of the the tachometer even gives you a little indicator saying you know for track used you uh, check the manual you know <laughs> see how to drive this car appropriately and safely and again this is a mustang rear wheel drive so you have to be careful how you drive this car especially in local roads and especially on the highway so just uh, be mindful of that and then you have the drag strip of course again that little <laughs> indicator for the track you see manual um, i personally haven't used this uh, mode as of yet, I've just uh, mainly stuck around Sport Plus or Track. And then you have Snow and Wet. You're not, uh, if, you're, if you're where I am, Southern California, you're not going to be using that. And then again, back to normal. I'll, I'll switch it into Sport Plus for now to really open up that exhaust. Now there's a ton of configuration on this car. Uh, you have this little button right here. So you have two setting buttons. Uh, so this one right here will allow you to configure your my mode. It'll allow you to change the exhaust mode. Uh, if you wanna do the, so if you go into exhaust mode, you can see, you can switch into quiet, normal, uh, sport and track. Uh, you can go into track apps and you can do line lock and things like that, a uh, lap timer. So a lot of, uh, a lot of, um, changes that you can make within these settings i know a lot of people feel overwhelmed it's not it's not that non-intuitive uh, a lot of people complain about these um uh this these settings um the settings menus but uh, i don't think it's that it's not as bad as people make it out to be it's just it does take like maybe a few minutes when you get into this car for the first time and you just want to you know sort through them uh but even the colors you can change in this car you can change that uh, the red if, if I want to go with green make it a traditional you know um, bullet green and you can put that in there as well uh, you can change the secondary color as well make it a full green I personally like the way the red looks so I'm gonna go back to the red and then you have ambient lighting in this car as well so as you can see there's a little bit of green coming out here and i guess you can't really see it. it's at night time there's also light underneath the, the the driver and the passenger side as well and then you can see a little bit of green there so that color you can configure as well so there's tons of configuration in this uh in this car again you have the gauges so you can configure my gauges and then you can change what exactly you want to see um rev match of course this car has auto rev match when you downshift so that's a nice touch launch control that's how you start it up um, and then you have this other setting which can kind of help you change uh, what you see on the front um, uh, around the gauge cluster so you know your speed whether you want kilometer per hour and um, just uh, things like that like your trip and fuel info and, and so forth uh, and then again you have uh, Ford uh, 
uh, Sync 3. So this is kind of dated now at this point. I, I'm looking forward to what they will introduce in the future. Uh, but of course you have Apple CarPlay, you have Android Auto, so you can just connect your your phone to this uh, car and it will just uh, it will just prompt that up for you um, you have these toggle switches here I love these toggle switches this is probably the best design elements that they carried in for this generation uh, however I don't like that you can't toggle down you can only toggle up so it's a little bit strange you have to if you miss your drive mode you you have to you know go all the way back again to your sport plus um, except for this hazard lights you can toggle up and down but that's it uh, and then you have your traditional um, uh, dual zone climate control, uh, the shifter of course, this uh, ha manual handbrake which everyone loves. I hope they never get rid of this. Um, uh, well, I guess they have, I believe, in the GT500 with the automatic, but hopefully in the manuals, um, any manual Mustangs that they put, put through, they don't get rid of this, uh, this manual parking brake. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, there's not really that much else to show you. If you sat in a Mustang, again, you're quite familiar with how this car looks. Let's take it out on the road and let's see how it performs. Before I do that, let's give us a little soundtrack here. So again, I'm in Sport Plus. Actually, let's start it up. Let me show you guys, uh, try to show you guys the difference between these. So in quiet mode, it automatically settles down a little bit. So... Let's see normal mode yeah you can hear a little bit more grumble in that a little bit more bass Let's get into sport it revs a little faster you can see and then track the car just is shaking a little bit more in track like uh, I'm not sure you guys probably can't see it but something that I feel is just so shaky uh, it's just such a visceral sound that active exhaust is definitely worth it in this car uh, Let's uh, let's keep it on sport. It is early in the morning. So don't want to go too loud are hearing that exhaust and it just sounds absolutely incredible even in normal mode uh, it, it screams uh, quiet mode does a pretty good job of kind of uh, limiting the sound here but really you only use it if you're early in the morning leaving uh, your neighborhood and you're just trying not to wake up so many people The clutch, it's it's nice. It's a little heavy, but uh, if you if you're a seasoned manual driver, you'll have no problem with getting into this uh, this driver's seat and um, and uh, getting comfortable with that clutch. Paired with that six-speed shifter, it's a nice shifter. Very smooth, very uh, very buttery feel actually. If I can best describe it, it's just. Um, just a nice feeling especially with that white perfect circle cue ball feel it's kind of like a glossy feel here
that the gear two uh, just has such a long spread. It's such a long shift time between two and three, and you can really rip it on on gear two. So. If that's something that you like, personally I do because when you're driving in the streets, it's kind of the sweet spot where you want to be. You want to pull at two and then you don't want to have to shift so quickly. Uh, two is such a nice place to be in this car. The 480 horsepower kicks in nicely, 420 pound feet of torque. It's a traditional pony engine. We all have been there, we all love it. It's nothing, uh, there's no downfall on this, with the, especially when you have that GT350 intake manifold kind of inhaling from the engine bay and exhaling out that active uh, exhaust. It's just the perfect uh, configuration in this car. See how that downshift performs? Sounds nice. that exhaust you just when you buy this car or when you buy uh, even the GT premium uh, and you get that active exhaust it's the kind of car that you just you want to drive all day just to hear it roar and frankly you get lost in that sound um, it's a variable valve timing uh, you know it's 32 valves in that engine and you really hear that grumble even when you're idling you can hear it grumble like in a certain way in a certain certain annotation and it's just it's such a unique uh, unique feeling that you get out of these cars and that's truly represents American muscle to its uh, to its core and uh, this is like American muscle America on steroids actually the GT350 would be on steroids this is more on supplements you know your protein and things like that I found about the clutch is that when you find that bite point or that disengage point it kind of stays there like you kind of have to really lift your foot up to let it kick itself back up otherwise it kind of just it's like as if for a second or half a second it just locks in place so you got to be extra quick when you release the clutch um, after you find that disengage point uh, but besides that, it's a great clutch. Uh, you, when you get this car, you want to get it with the active, um, sorry, not the, uh, the magnetic suspension. It's about, I believe, a $2,000 upgrade when you purchase this car. And, and I know, like, this car is discontinued at the time of making this video, so it's not really a question of configuring the magnetic uh, suspension. But the thing is, if you, even if you're in the market for a used bullet, um, most people who bought the car would definitely have thrown in the magnetic suspension and it does make a big difference in ride quality and uh, in comfortness wherever it can uh, again this is a Mustang it's a fastback it's a big car it's a heavy car it's roughly 3,700 pounds um, and then uh, it, it goes up to around like 4,000 in gross weight uh, so it's not a it's not a light car in any way it's still gonna you're still gonna feel that heaviness even especially when you're cornering and things like that it's gonna put a little bit of a drag um or a, a little bit of a disadvantage i would say when you're performing any kind of spirit of driving but again you have that 5.0 engine uh, v8 that just kicks it up a notch Now the fuel on a fuel economy in this car it's not that great it's not the greatest at all in any way it's 14 in the city and i believe 21 on the highway so combined is roughly 17. so even if you fill up the car and premium gas of course and uh, you fill up to the top you're gonna get just over 200 miles if you're just driving in the city you can maybe hit 300 if you're only doing highway but it's kind of rare that you're only doing highway right so so yeah, let's just put it at a sweet butter of maybe mid 200, low to mid 200, I would say. Um, and uh, so it's not the best. At the time when uh, these cars are being offered, when you buy the car, you actually were hit with a thousand dollar guzzler tax as well. So it's just, uh, it's not the best on gas. But again, you're not buying the cars for fuel economy or you're not buying it for uh, to save on gas, obviously. You're, you're buying this car so that you get that full rich experience. 
Um, and then, frankly, I would sacrifice the fuel economy a little bit to get that experience. Beautiful downshifts. Let's see that spread again. <laughs> Holy. That's the kind of experience you need. Especially when you have a V8. I mean, I, I love that spread and I just can't get enough of it. That's where I want to live. been quiet for a little bit uh, only because I want you guys to hear that exhaust and let that exhaust do the talking on behalf of me and, uh, and as you can tell it's just uh, it has its own language it has its own uh, sound that it's just it, it wants to scream it wants to roar and frankly you gotta you gotta let it do that right in this car uh, just be mindful when you're driving it through local roads or you know in, in, in between um, residential areas try to flip it on the quiet mode i know you know it, it does get really loud like it, re like the video doesn't really um showcase it that much because again the mic is not so strong um and i have the windows um up as well but when you hear it come down the street it's just uh and when the uh, the sound echoes off the buildings i mean it it's, it gets really loud so just uh, be careful about that also there are some roads of course that uh, they have those signs up that say, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, loud exhaust will be penalized. So, <laughs> it's just hope you don't get caught in those kind of situations. So overall, guys, this car is absolutely, it's a complete package. And uh, frankly, I think it really lives up to its name. If you throw it into the movie, I, I, I'm pretty sure in some time in, in the near future, they will make a remake of that iconic film. And when they do, um, th if it's this car or if it's another reprised version, it will um, it will satisfy its original Mustang 1968 legacy. I think it should carry it forward quite well. Um, again, Mustang has been upgraded over the years with lots of design changes, lots of uh, performance upgrades, and this car really stands out frankly i think if i was to get a mustang within this range this is the one that i would get even though it's discontinued um it just has that unique feel that unique look that really stands out um let me know what you guys think as well So guys, there you have it, the Ford Mustang Bullet. Absolutely an incredible car to own, to drive. Um, unfortunately discontinued now. They'll probably make a comeback, you know, when, I don't know, 10, 15 years down the road, when you have maybe two or three more generations ahead of Mustangs. 
However, uh, this is kind of replaced by the Mach 1. The Mach 1 has its own performance levels, but you can find it in that same category below the Shelby uh, GT350, but above the GT Premium. But however, this is the car that I love, and it's because of its uniqueness, its, uh, its subtle design cues. I just love that it's debadged, you know, that it's uh, stanced, uh, the, t the wheels as well, the rims, their classic look, very retro style, the bullet badge on the inside of the steering wheel the, the rear as well and overall it's a nice package especially with this dark highland green and the fact that it also has a little bit of uh, I, you know a movie uh, history behind it the fact that it has its own little value like you know the the Mustang the 1968 classic Mustang that's been driven by Steve McQueen himself kind of adds a badass name to uh, this car and um, Overall, for $46,000, you're getting a lot of car. You're getting a nice Mustang, fully loaded. Uh, you can just throw on the magnetic uh, suspension and the tech features and things like that. Um, but overall, it's a great, great car. Um, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what your opinions about this car and which Mustang you prefer in this lineup. Thank you so much for tuning in. Till next week.